Before starting with the energy balance section, I'd like to give a bit of an introduction here in this video, and we're going to start off by defining some terms. So the first of these terms are going to be the ones that are in this table here. So the first one is boundary, the next one system, and the third one is surroundings. So I'd like to group those three in our first set of definitions. And possibly the easiest way to define these is for those of you that are sporting players, sportsmen in particular cricket, hopefully that you remember from cricket, we talk about the boundary rope. And in cricket, it's a nice round setup where the players are in the middle and then everything inside that is the field of play. So we are going to define something very similar and we are going to have that the boundary is the defined demarcation of everything we are interested in. So the boundary is this line or this demarcation around it. Everything inside it is going to be the system and everything outside it is going to be the surroundings. Okay, so simply the boundary divides the system which is going to be inside and this divides the system and the surroundings. And the surroundings is everything that is outside our area of interest. The next section that I want to look at, or the next set of words, is going to be the open and the closed and the isolated system. So we've just said that a system We've got some defined boundary, so there's just a random circle, oval shape, and the system is going to be what is inside. So if we have a system, we can actually have things going in, we can have things going out, and those things can be mass, they can be energy. However, if we define an open system or a flow system, we are saying that mass can flow, so it's open to mass, and we're also saying that energy can flow. So if we have a hot stream coming in, obviously that hot stream is bringing heat, which would be bringing energy into it. On the other side, a closed system, we are now saying that something cannot come in. And in this instance, it is the mass, so no mass can flow. However, we are still allowing energy to flow into or out of the system, and that could be in the form of heat. The last one, the isolated system, is the simple one. We have no mass, and this time we have no energy. So there's nothing that can go across the boundary in the isolated system. The last one on this list, steady state versus non-steady state. And we're going to come back to this one in a lot of detail and there are already details of this in some of the other videos but very briefly if it's at steady state and there's a definition of this I think it's in the mass balance section we're going to define it if anything changes with time so that is our steady state term steady state is when that equals to zero and unsteady state is when we have DDT not equal to zero so heat, which we've already come across before, is going to be defined as the disorganized transfer of energy. And again, as we've said previously, it's because of a temperature gradient. Strictly speaking, heat is not included as part of the energy of a system. So if we have a system like that, the heat is not inside that, but it's because of the transfer. So heat will go into or out of the system as a Q value, whereas energy is going to be what is inside the system. So if we have no flow, so it's a closed system, we can say that the change in energy, which is going to be inside the system, is going to be the Q plus the W, which are going to be what moves across the boundary. So the next term on our list is going to be work. So work is typically the transfer of energy through the movement due to a force. So if there's going to be a force and there is movement, we are going to define that as work. There are several different types of work that have been defined, and I'm going to list them here very briefly. So the first one is expansion work. It's sometimes also called PV work, and that is the need, is the work that's needed to change a system's volume. 
So if we have a system or system boundary, so there's our normal system as I've defined before. If for some reason that system boundary, because there's an expanding gas, it becomes something bigger, there is a changing volume. So because of that changing volume, there is expansion work that is taking place. The next one on this list is flow work. So flow work, W flow, is the work performed when a stream exits or enters a system. So this time we have our system, our system boundary like that. And if something flows into or out of that, that is flow work. The next on the list is shaft work. So shaft work is WS, is if there's anything with a mechanical part to it. So either a pump, a compressor, a turbine, something that we have to plug into the wall to get electricity, which then results in some form of movement, is going to be shaft work. The next two are the electrochemical work, WEL, and any other form of work that you might find in textbooks or that you think might be a relative a word, a word, form of work, so electromagnetic work, sound work, and there are a couple of these various examples that are floating around. These ones are not going to be important for this course. So please don't worry about electrochemical work or any of the other forms of work. So it's flow work, expansion work, and shaft work are the three that we are going to be looking at. However, if we just quickly look at work in general, if we can add them all, typically work W is going to be all of these types of work added together. However, we typically rewrite that as W being the flow work, W flow, plus WN for everything else that is a non-flow work. So that is typically the definition of work and the breakdown of the terms that we will use. So next on the list for energy balance, we're going to have to come to it eventually, is the actual term energy. And energy is also going to be referred to as the ability to perform work. So we've already had the definition of work, so go and have a relook at that to see how that is defined. But this is now the ability to perform work. It is also added that we can also release heat. So energy can perform work or it can release heat. In the same way with work, there were several different definitions of work. We also have several different definitions of energy. The first one, kinetic energy, is the energy due to a movement of the center of mass of an object. So we've come across that one before. Rotational energy is the energy when we have something resting, but it is rotating around itself. So there's no movement from left to right, but there is rotation. Potential energy is the energy due to a relative height. So how high is something from a reference point? That is the potential energy. The electrical energy is the energy stored in things such as capacitors. Surface energy is the intermolecular energy created by a surface. And lastly, internal energy is the energy of the molecules themselves. So it's also seen as the sum of the thermal energy, chemical bonding energy, and the latent energy on a molecular level. In terms of this course, we will look at kinetic energy, rotational energy we will not worry about, and sorry this is getting a bit messy, potential energy will be important, electrical energy is not, surface energy is not, and back to internal energy, that one will be important. So these three, kinetic, potential, and internal energy will all come, will play a major part in this course. If we have to look at this in terms of letters and summation, the total energy is U, and U being the odd one out here in terms of letters is the internal energy plus all the other forms of energy that we can come across. So looking more closely at internal energy, for a closed system earlier on in this video, we showed that the change in energy is equal to Q plus W. We've also just shown that the total energy term is equal to U, the internal energy, plus all the other terms for energy that we've already used. If our system has no E-K-E-R-E-P-E-L, so we've already said that we're not going to worry about some of those energies in this course, and kinetic and potential energy can be fairly small in the system, we can simplify this to say that E is equal to the internal energy. If we substitute that term into the original delta E plus Q term, we can now say that the change in internal energy is equal to the heat plus the W, the Q plus the W in a closed system. Strictly speaking, we should write that as a delta Q 
dq rather, the derivative of u is equal to the partial derivative of q plus the partial derivative of w. The final term we are going to define today is going to be enthalpy. And we are going to define the enthalpy as enthalpy h being equal to the internal energy plus the pressure times the volume of that system. Internal energy is a function of temperature, so enthalpy is also going to be a function of temperature, but it's one that is going to be measured according to some known value. So we have mentioned this before of energy being relative to something else, or it is a difference term that we report, not an absolute value. In the same way, enthalpy is going to be related to a value against a basis. So typically the basis is chosen as the elements in their standard state. So at one atmosphere and 298.15 Kelvin, the enthalpy is defined as zero. So any enthalpy that you're given is going to be relative to the basis. So please check what the basis is. You can only add enthalpies that have the same basis. If they have a different basis and the zero assumption that we have here where h is equal to zero is for a different state, you cannot add them. You can only add enthalpies that have the same basis.